aluminum chloride is a critical catalyst in organic synthesis, particularly for the friedel crafts reactions. To form the Lewis dot structure for this compound, we notice that each chlorine atom has seven valence electrons. So the three chlorines together contribute 21 electrons. Aluminum brings in three valence electrons. So we end up with a total of 24 valence electrons for the system. Now we realize that chlorine at minimum needs to satisfy the octet rule. So for each, around each chlorine atom, we immediately put eight electrons. That gives us our 24 electrons right away. We can use a pair of electrons from each of the chlorine atoms to bind to aluminum uh, to hold the molecule together, and that gives us a single bond. And we realize in this particular structure, the only element that does not have a complete octet is aluminum. It only has six electrons. But then we recall that for elements in the third column, that they are very often electron deficient in their molecules, particularly when they are in compounds where they act as Lewis acids. So that's what we see in this particular case. And this would lead us to believe that aluminum chloride would be a Lewis acid. And it turns out that is absolutely true. Aluminum hydroxide has the chemical formula ALOH3. So it actually includes three OH hydroxide groups directly attached to the central aluminum atom. Each oxygen contributes six valence electrons, so that gives us 18 electrons for the three oxygens. The hydrogens each contribute one electron, that gives us three more, and then three more on top of that come from the aluminum. So here, yet again, we see another 24 electron system, and we can recognize that in satisfying the octet for the oxygens, we have eight, eight, and eight, that gives us our 24 electrons. To hold the molecule together, we need a single bond between each hydrogen and oxygen. And the way the cards are designed, the hydrogen have to be on the outside. Uh, we have a intermediate oxygen atoms, so it forms single bonds to both hydrogen and to aluminum. And again, we see a case of aluminum having only six electrons, having an incomplete octet. So whereas we had said that to satisfy the octet rule, we always have to fill up all the graves. The one exception to that that we always have to keep in mind is for the third column, the aluminum family, boron, that this is very often able to be left open, at least temporarily, in compounds. That is a sign that this particular compound, even though it is named as a hydroxide and has basic properties, also has Lewis acidity properties because it has this uh, open area where it can accept a lone pair. <clears throat> These types of materials that have both acid and base properties we call amphoteric. One example of the amphoteric properties of aluminum hydroxide are if we were to react this compound with excessive base in the form of hydroxide, the OH- would actually donate a lone pair to the aluminum hydroxide. Then we would have an AlOH4-1 unit that actually would be soluble. So if we originally add aluminum hydroxide to water, it's insoluble. It's a kind of a gummy, sticky material. But if we add excess base, we can actually begin to get the aluminum hydroxide to solubilize. And that's all because of this acid-base properties of the aluminum atom of the aluminum hydroxide.